Welcome back to the Cricket Matters podcast. Today we're talking about off-season training for cricketers. Uh, James, you like to break this down, or we like to break this down into three phases. What are the three phases? And then we'll dig into them uh, more in depth for each one. Absolutely. So phase one is essentially recovery, mobility and injury prevention. And what I mean by that is it's recovering from the season because cricket and the season takes a long time hard toll on the body and we have to address and give it time to recover, repair and reset. So that's phase one, which usually lasts one to two weeks. Phase two is a strength and power phase. Now it's had a chance to recover. We've got a phase of power, strength and get back in the weight room, build the strength we need to, to bowl faster, you know, smash the ball over the boundaries as much as you possibly can. And then phase three is but we tie aerobic and anaerobic development together. That's the cardio for simple layman's terms. However, I'd say it's more anaerobic base. Whilst there's an overseeding over the three phases, there's aerobic work going on the entire time. Building aerobic yep. across the whole phase. In the off season. Yeah. So we do that more time because, because the aerobic stuff improves recovery. It helps in prevention. It gets you fitter. It also helps recovery from the strength and power stuff. And then it helps you build the... The, the volume, the engine, basically for the season two. So those are the three areas we'd like to focus on and, and split it up. So if in the UK, that means September is injury at that recovery phase. October into November is that strength and power phase. And then leading up to Christmas is the start of the anaerobic phase. And building on work on the aerobic phase, ready for pre-season starting January. What about any downtime? Because obviously you're coming back off the, uh, you know, off the back of a long cricket season, any any downtime at all? A couple of weeks off, or you, would you say go straight into like, yeah, you know, recovery, maintenance uh, for for injury prevention, as you say. I think it's it's important to reframe it. I think it's important to have time off from cricket, right? So I'm not talking training. I think training is a 365 day year approach. That's that's, the, that's just changing mindset around there because if you it's once you come off the training bandwagon, it's hard to get back on it again. And it doesn't mean training hard all the time. It just means training sensible, training smart, but taking a break from cricket. Like already I'm seeing people, particularly young kids, going back in the nets ready for next season. They haven't had a break. Like give them the chance to go and play other sports, enjoy things, enjoy everything else that's out there. Because cricket is fun. It's exciting. I get that. However, it can take a toll on the body and you can get bored of it. And it's about staying fresh and mentally ready as well. So I definitely recommend taking a break from cricket. In terms of training and fitness and things like that, well, it depends on the person involved. We are, we are encouraging athletes to, to always do something every day, right? Whether it's nutrition-based, whether it's mobility, recovery, but going for a walk, it's important to do something and maintain that training cycle, so it depends on the athletes we're working with. So yes and no is the answer. It's not an easy, simple answer, if that helps. No, that's good. I was just going to say, go back to what you mentioned before about getting back in the nets and, you know, young kids, you know, not really having a break and doing a lot of cricket. It's something that Mike Boyle talks about, isn't it? About don't specialise too early. Enjoy, enjoy your life, enjoy playing other sports, whether that's football or rugby, tennis, whatever it is, go out and do other things, don't specialise too early. Do you think that's really important? Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the things I've just written. We did an, I did an assessment for a lad at Cardiff called Will on Saturday, and we looked at his overall fitness and we looked at some of his technique work. And one of the things I recommended in my report for him, which we do when we, when we analyse anybody, is what's he going to do, what he needs to do next. And my recommendation was go and play football. Go and play as much football now in the next few months Yes, work on some other things and work in the gym, but go play football, enjoy the time playing football because you can focus on cricket again, technical stuff, maybe come January or maybe in December when he starts up with the, with the pathway squad. But take that break and go and enjoy it because it just adds a level of cardio, training, fitness, uh, coordination, balance, skills, doing all these sports. It's just, ha- it's just so much better and it's, all the research leads to multi-sporting athletes at a young age develop better and you always it's no it's it's not surprised to see you know let's take ab de villiers in terms of cricket he was a great tennis player great rugby player great football player at the same time you know great athletes tend to be good at all sports and we encourage multi-sports activities as much as we can particularly with youth athletes 
Yeah, absolutely. So as we say, phase one, it's all about uh, recovery, injury prevention and improving mobility. Because generally in our time training cricketers, we've found that not many of them have very good mobility, do they? Something that cricketers definitely need to uh, need to work on. So phase two, let's talk a little bit more about the building, the strength and power. Where does, where does fat loss come into this? Does fat loss come into this phase? Oh, yeah, it does actually across everything. I think that's again, that, that comes in the overall strategy over, overall. Now, I'm not a big fan of doing fat loss in season because it's just too difficult. There's too many things, too many factors going on. However, when it comes to the off season, the first thing we recommend everyone doing is assessing where is their fitness right now? Where is their health right now? And do they even need to lose a bit of weight? Because now is the time to lose weight, not January, right? Now is the time if, you, if you're slightly overweight, and you need to lose a bit of body fat, now is the time to do it between September, October, November, ready for Christmas, okay? Be careful of Christmas. <laughs> exactly. But also we, we set people in, like, give them methods to, to manage the Christmas period effectively as well. Not saying diet over Christmas, never. But when we're coming in January, we're fit, raring, and eager to go. That's the key thing here. Now, we don't want to be in a fat loss stage in January, February, March, because that's building up to the season. So it depends on the athlete involved. Now, there will be an element of strength and power work with all the athletes because we've got to build that foundation now, ready for pre-season, ready for the season, which takes an even bigger toll on the body. So these ty- this time now is, you know, we always say this period between, I'd say, 1st of October and just before Christmas is key in the strength and power effect. And we want people in the weight room as much as possible because come January, February, all the way to the end of the season in the UK, particularly until September, the weight room is going to have less of a, a priority, I think is the best way to put it. Still continue to train, though. We'd highly recommend that you still do train ideally twice a week, obviously for uh, lower intensity, lower volume, but you, you should always keep up your training during the off, uh, during in season as well. Okay, let's move on. What about um, the aerobic base? You mentioned it runs across all three phases, really. Why, should, why do cricketers need this to focus on this aerobic base building as well? Well, cricket is an all-day event. And sometimes if you're playing the highest levels or even at county cricket, it's a four- five-day event too. So you need an aerobic base to recover quickly, to keep going again and keep making better decisions when playing the game. The bigger your aerobic base, the fitter you will be to make better decisions and make the right decision when it matters most. If you're blowing out your ass, you're going to struggle to make decisions. And you can't just do that from doing a series of shuttles for 20 minutes. Cricket's not a game of 20 minutes. And you never know, as Steve James on the podcast recently said, you never know when you're going to score those big runs, right? So you've got to prepare for it as if you're always going to score those big runs and be fit enough to recover fast enough, okay? That could be for bowling as well. Bowlers are going to have this energy in the tank as well so they can get through those 10 over spells if they're doing it at the same time. So aerobic capacity needs to be it's like kind of the overarching theme of all three phases, right? And what I mean by aerobic capacity, light intensity, longer piece of work. I'll give an example. I'm currently wearing a weight vest, right, here today as we're doing the podcast. You may think I'm crazy, I'm working from home. Why am I wearing this weight vest? Well, twofold. One, it's actually for fat loss. I'm trying to improve my fat loss because I put on a couple of kilos over the summer and I'm trying to lose that as quickly as I possibly can. But two, it's building up a baseline aerobic capacity. I'm wearing this as I'm walking around the house you know now i'm not saying you should wear this around the office or like go to school wearing these things put your you suit and tie stupid. on over it might look like exactly yeah, like a michelin man in some respects <laughs> yeah but i can do that at home and that's like three four hours training where i'm just i'm at my stand-up desk i'm working at my stand-up desk well i've got this on i'm building low intensity threshold where it becomes light and comfortable so if we'll do a separate podcast all together on how we're using the weight vest for, for fat loss I was going to say, we have done podcasts on this in the past, uh, but for our Cricket Matters audience, we should probably do their own special podcast. I think we should. But, you know, for, in terms of aerobic development, I'm a big fan of long hikes, walking at big mountains, particularly here in Wales. I get up a mountain as often as possible. I'm up for walking at least 30 minutes a day, as much as possible, and just doing low-intensity, long pieces of running, cycling, and even rowing in some cases, or even swimming if you like swimming, you're good at swimming, right? Just so we can have this long, easy intensity base that we're building ready so you can recover faster when we go to the hard anaerobic sprint sessions we do later in this development and ready for the sprint seasons in terms of January leading up to the season. 
Mm, absolutely. Uh, do you want to dive into the anaerobic work or we, or recovery, potential overtraining? Because, again, we're talking about when I say recovery, you know, sleeping well, eating well, etc., which is really important um, during off-season when you're starting to ramp up your training especially. Yeah, I think the a lot of the anaerobic work we do is around... I wouldn't say it's always around running. Now, there's an element of some of some of the guys we work with. We need to improve sprint mechanics and we want them sprinting to get them faster, right? But that is, you know, once, twice, and it's easy-ish work. So we want to keep them. We want to get them sprinting as often as possible, as fresh as possible, as fast as possible, right? And it's not always possible for people at home to time themselves if they're doing it. But what we'd like, I'm a big fan of, and I keep talking about it time and time again, is the assault bike and getting guys on the assault bike and doing short, sharp bursts and also extending it out. A good example is you, we do a couple of testing modules. We see how many calories they can hit in 15 seconds. We do 15 second bursts, rest until a certain time or heart rate, and then go again. And we kind of build these repeated cycles on the assault bike because I think it's a great athletic developer that's not too hard in the body and that's great for all the athletes involved. So it's short, sharp bursts, but it's specific and concentrated. We're not just doing these finishes at the end of the strength workouts. It's a dedicated conditioning session around it. So what would you say a good, well-structured off-season training plan should look like? What are, what are all the elements we need to make sure that they have? In terms of the early part of phase one, mobility work, recovery work, soft tissue work even, I think a lot of them neglect post-season. Go and get yourselves a good massage. I think we need to interview a couple of guys to tell them how, what a good massage is and what they need to look for from a massage therapist, potentially that's an idea for a podcast. That's the first phase. But it continues. Continue, keep doing your mobility. If, even if it's yoga, go to yoga. That's a great way to, to prep and do it. In terms of strength, it's heavy work. We're going to go do some heavy work. And I say heavy work is a mixture of three to five reps it's with some higher hypertrophy type work as well, with six to ten reps sort of range as well in what we're doing here. But the power work you've got to be powerful and explosive as a cricketer whether it's bowling whether it's batting whether it's running in the field so there's a lot of explosive development work in the weight room it's not just bodybuilding stuff that we see all the kids doing at the moment they want to look vain they want to look like all the gym shark influencers all those sorts of guys but i'm seeing a lot of young kids going to the gym copying these influencers but they're actually getting slower because they're training to be a bodybuilder and their fitness model as opposed to a yeah, cricketing not, not to be athletic exactly exactly um anything you want to just round off with or that that was a pretty good summary but anything that you want to add on before we wrap up no i think that's fine i think if they want an idea of how we train people in the off season is to go and download our free training guide go to the website download our seven day training plan it's a good example and an idea of what you could be doing in the gym during the off season I think that's a, it's a great start. And I think maybe we dive in later down the line and actually do a specific and talk about a specific program for one of our athletes so they can see how we structure the whole week, maybe, in terms of the, their development. So maybe that's it. There we go. Exactly. James, you stole my line. If you would like our free trainer plan, you can go to cricketmatters.com forward slash train. And uh, that is it for today. Please don't forget to rate, review and subscribe. And we'll catch you next time. Thank you very much.